my channel for everyone that is new. My name is Amberly and I own and run Desert Heart Dairy Goats here in Yuma, Arizona. For today's video, I'm just going to share with you what my breeding plans are and what's already happened so far. So what most registered breeders do is they'll come up with breeding plans, a schedule, they'll start taking in reservations and just really lining up what their plans are for kidding season. Unfortunately with my plans, I like to be impulsive and sometimes I have um, a breeding schedule and I swear I'm gonna stick to it and I'm gonna make sure I breed on certain dates and then you walk outside and things change. So I did come up with a breeding schedule. I did post it, I did advertise it um, on my website, on my social media platforms, the whole nine yards. I had planned to kid um, early to mid-February. That was my plan. Um, it would still be cool outside, but not freezing. It wouldn't be hot outside. I can get does on milk test early. Um, I'll be freshening seven does this season. So of course, it, it's gonna be a lot on my plate for myself. Um, other breeders handle large numbers very well. I'm still learning. So I wasn't sure what 2022 was gonna bring for me and my herd. And with that comes impulsive decisions. And so I came out uh, one evening, as I do before I milk, um, I observe everyone and just top off waters as needed, check on everyone um, to make sure everyone's doing well. And I noticed one of the does was in heat. I noticed that T was in heat, which is Trouble's full sister. I noticed she was in heat, looked at my breeding schedule and noticed that she'd be kidding January 22nd which is the same day that Trouble kitted this year. So, and it wasn't bad. It was cool outside um, and I got to start milk testing early with her. Of course, with breeding tea, that means that I did change my breeding plans. Um, I kept the same buck that I had originally paired her with, so that had no doubt that that was not gonna change. Um, but that means that I will have kids 2022 in January. Um, and so that leads me to the next day walk out that afternoon the next day check on everybody and i noticed that kitty and trouble are both in heat raging heat like screaming um ready to pound down the fence so i looked at my schedule my calendar all right january 23rd not so bad you know t trouble and kitty all kidding within the same week give or take if they you know they go past a couple of days not bad not bad at all so what do i do uh being myself Kitty goes in the breeding pen with her buck. Trouble goes in the breeding pen with her chosen buck. And things happen, magical moments, the whole nine yards. And they're now marked on the calendar as bred and kidding January 23rd, uh, it, give or take some days. They, they do go past some days um, sometimes. So having three of my does kid within the same week is no problem. That was my original plan was to have my herd all kid within two weeks um, in this one big group. That way I could take time off of work, take vacation, be present in case there's any complications and they need assistance. So that was no issue. It's just, I just cut my break <laughs> a little bit shorter. So I hadn't planned to kid until mid February. I'm now doing end i'd consider it end of january it's end of january so i'm cutting my vacation of no milking break down a little bit so i'll be starting a little bit earlier so <laughs> let's get into the breeding plans now all right so we're going to start off with t which t is just her bar name registered name is desert bounty f sweet talk i'll put photos up here i paired t up with Ryder. i paired her up with Ryder. I didn't really have a sole reason why um, I really wanted to breed Trouble to Ryder, but last minute decided to breed Trouble to Zeus. Um, because T and Trouble share the same genetics, she was a shoe in She will be a first time freshener on my farm, but second time freshener overall. So what T is gonna bring to the table is her long body and dairy strength. Now with that, what I hope to correct with bringing Ryder in as a buck is he's gonna bring in that bone mass. He's gonna bring in that width um, so that you know the kids that will be um, produced with this breeding will have the width, the dairy strength, the general appearance, and just solid legs beneath them. So next up is gonna be Kitty. Kitty brings width to that table. I mean, there's no doubt about it that that girl is wide. 
Um, you guys have heard me say it before, and I, I call her a whale. That is sometimes her nickname. Um, so she brings in that solid bone structure. She brings in that width to carry her udder throughout the years. Now I paired her up with Johnny. Um, Johnny is, I like to call him elegant within the buck pen. Um, he shows that dairy strength. He has that really nice um, rear angulation in his um, hind legs. He shows solid structure in, in his bones as well. So there's not gonna be any flaws within that. What I also hope with Johnny is that he's going to bring in his dam's udder. It's going to be better attached. The teeth are going to be in the right placement. So next up is going to be Trouble. Trouble was one of the only does that I got to have Linnea praise this season. Um, she did score an E in dairy strength and general appearance. So with that, I don't want to lose I don't want to lose my dairy strength. So I paired her up with Zeus. He has numerous superior genetics. All of his lines bring top quality milk into the pail, but they also bring in that bone structure that she's lacking. So she is, she is more refined in the shoulders. She's more refined in her front end. So hopefully with bringing in Zeus, he's gonna bring in that width. Now I am fairly new. So for all the, the, the goat breeders that um, are advanced, go easy on me. I'm still learning more terminology as far as describing what I'm trying to correct. I have it all mentally up here, um, just getting it out to, to verbal words and vocabulary is a little difficult. So if I do describe something incorrectly, just go nicely, I'm trying. <laughs> so hopefully those three breeding stick and we have Tea Trouble and Kitty all kidding within a week uh, come end of January. What does that mean for the four remaining does that I still have that need to be bred, which are Pixie, Lady, Kate, and Diva. So those four still have to be bred. Um, I do have bucks already planned for them. I have all my breeding plans sought out as far as who is breeding who. Now as far as dates, now that is something that is not 100% locked down just yet. So I do just want to address my style of breeding. Um, there is leash breeding or also known as hand breeding and then there's also pen breeding. So pen breeding is when you put the buck and does or just buck and doe in the pen and you leave them for the full duration of two heats, which is usually anywhere from 35 to 45 days, just to ensure that that doe is bred. Now what I like to do is called, I like to call it leash breeding just because hand breeding sounds so weird to me. Um, but leash breeding is exactly as it as it sounds. You take the doe out, have someone hold her, or you you know clip her to the fence line, bring out that buck, and he does his job. I usually like to count three to four times of being fully covered within that duration um, or that day of being bred. They go back to their you know their um, assigned pens from there. The next day you do the same thing if she still shows that she's in standing heat. Um, what I like to do is just mark that on the calendar. I've had success. Last year I did all leash breeding. Um, I had four does kid. All but two does went on their exact day. Of course, Trouble and Kitty went two to four days past, but that's their style. Some does like to go past the, the initial you know, due date, which is no problem, but leash breeding worked out so well for me. Um, the reason that I prefer to do leash breeding or hand breeding is because I do work full-time job so this just entails that I can be here for those due dates because I know or roughly know exactly when they're going to be due I can take time and vacation off and I can be here um, through it all in case there is complications unfortunately um, I have two boys in my household which I'm not saying that they're not capable of it but of course um, as as any person I am picky and I want to make sure that my girls are taken care of during their whole kidding process so my plan for my 2022 kid crop is to retain heavy um, now I do have some reservations um, from some breeders locally that are interested and they're doing the performance programs. So of course because they are doing the programs, they're putting in the work, um, it's going to help prove that animal. Um, so I do have, I have those reservations set aside if those chosen does produce what, what they're asking. But otherwise I do re plan to retain heavy. I want to see these udders on these kids that I'm hopefully improving 
and I want to get some animals on property that are in my herd name and get that genetic pool going and further improve uh, Desert Heart Dairy Goats and Nigerian Dwarf Breed. Now I know that might sound super corny because it sounds corny to me coming out my mouth, but yes, I plan to retain heavy. I plan to keep all the kids, um, not all the kids. I mean, I, I have the reservations, but I plan to keep a lot of them. So we'll see, we'll see what my numbers look like for 2022.